Being here today, uh, all these aircraft are actively supporting the fires that are burning in and around Northern California. We're going to do our best, but again, we're at an active air base. Uh, so if we need to at points, we'll pause and let aircraft come and go. Uh, but that's what it's really about. This is obviously none of this is staged. This is really going on in support of uh, our fires. Before we get to the actual speakers, I want to introduce several uh, key individuals who are here with me today that won't be speaking. First is uh, Mike Dayton, the Undersecretary for the California Emergency Management Agency. Chief Bill Holmes, the Cal Fire Northern Region Chief. Chief Kim Zagaris, the Fire and Rescue Chief for California Emergency Management Agency. And Joe Millar, uh, Fire Management Officer for the U.S. Forest Service here in Region 5. Well, as you can see, despite the warm temperatures and dry conditions that we've had in California, firefighters are making progress on the dozen or so fires that have been burning around the state. Uh, in fact, last night, last night, firefighters contained uh, two of the largest fire uh, of the larger fires, bringing the total fire count down to a ten in the number of fires. Uh, over eight thousand firefighters currently. Uh, remain on the fire lines in Northern California and will continue to fight fire to bring these fires uh, contained and under control despite the weather conditions. As you know, we've, we're in some very significant dry conditions throughout the state. We anticipate these conditions uh, throughout the remainder of fire season until the, the fall and winter rains come later this year. Cal Fire has responded to 1,400 more fires this year to date than it did at this time last year. Uh, and as you can see, we've obviously got several large fires that continue to burn uh, as we speak. Uh, we, again, attribute this uh, increase in activity to the dry conditions uh, that we've been experiencing both in the weather and in the fuel conditions. We've had a lot of activity, but believe it or not, we are just now entering into that time of year when we see our largest and most damaging fires, not just here in Northern California, but as, I, as we get into the fall months, we'll be having our uh, our typical conditions and weather conditions in Southern California, San Ana wind conditions, etc. So again, we are just really in the midst of fire season this year. Cal Fire has spent, along with our cooperators, we've spent months training, preparing for this. This is what California uh, is known for and what we do with the system we have in place. But despite the fact that Cal, Cal Fire is a large statewide fire department, we can't fight these fires alone. With our cooperators that you see behind me, the Forest Service, our other federal partners, Cal EMA, local government, we all work together uh, to fight those fires. In addition to our other fire service firefighting agencies, uh, our partnership with the California National Guard, our long-standing relationship is key to providing key assets such as the helicopter you see behind me uh, and many others that are out supporting the firefighting operations now. Without the support, uh, these cooperators of the National Guard and our other military partners, uh, we would not be able to be effective in these large and, uh, fires and the number of fires that we have. Today I would like to introduce the next speaker will be uh, General Dave Baldwin, the Adjutant General for the California Guard. General Baldwin. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon, everybody. As the Chief mentioned, the California National Guard uh, began preparing for this fire season by working with our interagency partners to update our plans and ensure our crews, our air crews, our ground crews, our tr we've been working to ensure that our crews were ready to go when the governor ordered us to come in to start assisting and suppressing these fires. California National Guard, Air National Guard crews have been engaged for over a month now fighting fires throughout the Intermountain West with the Modular Airborne Firefighting System, which we now have deployed here in California operating out of McClellan Air Base in Sacramento. For the past two weeks, we've employed helicopter assets from both the Army and the Air National Guard, and together with the, our air tankers, we've dropped over 600,000 gallons of fire, of water and retardant on the fires throughout California. Our main effort has been in the fire suppression efforts from the air, but we're also providing aerial medical evacuation support with air crews that are battle-tested in the fields of Iraq and Afghanistan that stand ready to launch at a moment's notice to assist firefighters day or night throughout Northern California. 
We're also providing small helicopters that have high-tech, uh, full motion video and mapping capabilities to provide additional support to incident commanders. We've been working with CAL FIRE and the California Emergency Management Agency to plan and prepare for additional uh, capabilities that tap upon the full spectrum of military capabilities we have available resident in the National Guard or in the active military. Um, we're beginning planning and discussions about training Type 2 hand crews and bulldozer crews in the event the fire season gets worse, National Guard assets will be able to reinforce the crews that are already deployed from local, state, and federal fire agencies. One thing unique this year, we've gotten the authority from our governor and the Secretary of Defense to activate what's called the Dual Status Command Construct, which enables a California National Guard soldier, officer, to command and control not only National Guard troops, but active duty troops from the Navy, the Army, the Marine Corps, or the Air Force, should they be needed. We've already deployed in Southern California helicopters from the United States Marine Corps and the United States Navy, and if the situation continues to get worse through the rest of the fire season, we'll anticipate being able to use those assets throughout the state. This new command and control construct has streamlined the process for us to be able to move assets around the state, and it also enables the incident commander to only have to deal with one commander instead of having to go to two different militaries, the National Guard and the active component. It's now under one team committed to helping the people of California. And with that, I'll be followed by Secretary Mark Gillarducci, the Secretary of Cal California Emergency Management Agency. Thank you, General Baldwin. <clears throat> Good afternoon. First of all, um, let me just say that on behalf of the governor and all of us in the uh, st state operations, you know, our sympathies go out to those who have lost property and homes. We know how difficult a time this can be, and um, you know, 50 homes is a, a lot of homes, and um, you know, we certainly understand there could be more. So it really focuses on the significance of uh, the firefight and, and our, our activities to, to be able to mitigate this particular situation. Um, as many of you know, uh, yesterday the governor proclaimed a state of emergency uh, for uh, uh, Shasta, Tehama, and Plumas counties uh, uh, in relation to these fires themselves. Um, this emergency declaration positions as well to be able to uh, uh, minimize any uh, um, impediments that may uh, arise to being able to streamline the firefighting efforts. Uh, it also continues to put emphasis on uh, the seriousness of the situation, all available state resources um, on tap for responding and, and mitigating the, the situation. Um, also, uh, the governor has been able to secure a what we call a fire management assistance grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, uh, which is designed to be able to cover a majority of the response and recovery costs associated with this uh, particular set of fires. And uh, that will help a great deal uh, for the local authorities that are, and the state agencies that are responding to, to the Ponderosa fire uh, and being able to address some of the costs. Um, our office has been very, very engaged working with CAL FIRE and, uh, and uh, the California Guard and all of the mutual aid uh, stakeholders and participants. Um, currently, we've got uh, over 61 strike teams committed to this fire, um, uh, over 300 engines and uh, over 1,000 firefighters uh, on the line. And we will continue to, to, to provide those resources as, uh, as necessary. We know, uh, as been mentioned uh, by Chief Pemlot, that we are early in the season, and uh, this is more of a, a, um, a, a marathon, not a sprint. And so we're prepared to, and the governor's prepared to continue to support um, uh, all the activities as necessary. So with that, I'd like to now introduce um, Chief Janine Wade Evans of the U.S. Forest Service for her part of the briefing. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Jean Wade Evans. I'm Deputy Regional Forester for the U.S. Forest Service here in California. Um, I'd like to thank Cal EMA, Cal Fire, and uh, the National Guard. Uh, for the opportunity today to talk about our ongoing coordinated fire suppression support. So the U.S. Forest Service really supports this decision to enter into dual status command authority here in California. This intergovernmental response capability, um, this working together will be strengthened with this. Um, and given our current high level of fire activity here in Northern California, 
uh, working together in such a coordinated manner is really critical for all our mutual success. Uh, since the activation of the National Guard helicopters in California, the Guard's been active on multiple large fires, and we've had multiple, including uh, fires on national forest lands. Um, they've provided additional water dropping support as well as reconnaissance capabilities. Uh, they've also, the Guard has also provided a medevac helicopter based at Reading Airport uh, to support, support those on the ground um, incidents and our troops on the ground. It's being staffed 24 7. We really appreciate this critical um, support, readiness support to all our firefighters on the ground. The Modular Airborne Firefighting System, commonly known as MAFS, um, has been supporting both federal and state incidents in California, and we have a long history with MAFS. Uh, the Forest Service really um, appreciates and recognizes this contribution to provide this additional firefighting support here in California. These lands are really critical, the houses are important, uh, the property is important, and the water that feeds all of California is really important as well. So as we move into late summer and fall, we look forward to this continued partnership. We know it's going to be of value and critical to all of our um, missions. With that, I'd like to um, introduce Colonel Robert Spano, uh, California National Guard. Good afternoon. Uh, pleasure to be here today. Uh, as was mentioned by General Baldwin, uh, Governor Brown and Secretary Panetta have appointed me as the dual status commander for this particular emergency, which we anticipate to last through the fall. Uh, I am currently serving in two capacities. I'm serving in a Title 32 state capacity, and I'm serving also in a Title 10 federal capacity, which allows me to command and control two separate and distinct chains of command. With that, uh, if we integrate more Title 10 federal resources into the fight, as we had with the Navy and the Marine Corps helicopters last week. If we integrate those aircraft back into the fight or should we integrate any other uh, federal resources into the fight to fight these fires here in California, I will have the ability as the dual status commander to command and control both the federal assets that are brought in as well as the state assets, which we see flying around us here this afternoon. Uh, right now, I have a, a Title 10 deputy that we brought out from Northern Command in Colorado, uh, Colonel Jed Hudson and he serves as my Title 10 deputy. So under this separate distinct chain of command, any orders I receive from the Title 10 Federal Forces, I will then pass through uh, Colonel Hudson, and then he will then provide the onward marching orders to the Title 10 Federal Forces. In addition, I have a Title 32 deputy that serves in the California National Guard, Colonel Laura Yeager, who has been involved in the fight from the very beginning. She's also the Aviation Brigade Commander here with the California National Guard. And should I receive any uh, state orders from the governor, from the adjutant general, I will then pass along those orders down to, to Colonel Yeager, and she will execute just like we're doing right now, in which we're, we're providing aircraft on the fires, as well as medevac aircraft in a standby position. So it's a pleasure to be serving uh, in this capacity and uh, to serve as the first dual status commander in the history of the California National Guard. It's an honor to be here today. Thank you.